Hi, and welcome back to the second video in the Capital Cost Allowance series. I just wanted to refresh some of the things we just saw in the first video. So we saw that you're purchasing some equipment or some capital property with your after-tax dollars. That's easy. We saw that you can't deduct that full cost. And we saw then that you're going to have some rate of depreciation which creates the deduction and then you're going to reduce the deductible cost on that based on this undepreciated capital cost. So from there we can go to our next topic. So we're still dealing with capital cost allowance but in this video instead of looking at how it's calculated we're going to look at what happens when you have a disposition of some property where you have had this capital cost allowance used. So let's say that you bought a piece of property here. We'll use maybe some smaller values this time. Let's say you bought a piece of property for $10,000. So this, if you paid $10,000 for it, we know this. Nothing unusual here. This is your adjusted cost base for that property, your ACB. Oops. That's going to be that ACB for that property. Now, you've owned the property for some period, and let's say in the time that you've owned it, you've been able to depreciate it down to $8,000. So now you own this property, and you have an $8,000 undepreciated capital cost. Or, put another way, you were able to take $2,000 of depreciation in the time that you owned it. That's what you took as your CCA while the property was owned. And now it's depreciated to that, or that's how much depreciation you took, sorry, that's how much tax benefit you got. So now there are sort of three different things that could happen here. And work with me on these. So we'll work through three different scenarios. In scenario number one, and you might not like the order I do these in, but for teaching purposes, this will be the easiest. So in scenario one, let's say that we sell it for more than the UCC. We sell it for $9,000. Actually, let me use 8500 there. That might be a little less confusing. We're going to sell this thing for $8,500 just a touch more than the UCC. In my scenario number two, in scenario number two, we'll see what happens if we sell it for less than that UCC. Let's say in scenario number two, we sell it for $7,600 for less than its undepreciated capital cost. And in scenario number three, in scenario number three, we're going to sell it for, and this would be most unusual, but we're going to sell it, sell it, for, let's say, $11,000. So now we have three different sort of selling prices here. Now, for the top set of scenarios, we're going to assume that it is the last property in its class. So in all three of these cases, it's the last property in its class. And the reason this is significant is because UCC actually isn't calculated for each piece of property. It's actually calculated for the whole class. So if you have three passenger vehicles, you would calculate the UCC and CCA for the three vehicles, not for each vehicle individually. So now we're selling one piece of property and we sell it for $8,500. So what happens here is the Income Tax Act says, well, hang on a second here. You told us it was only worth $8,000. That was sort of where you were basing this on. But when you're able to sell it for $8,500, hey, we think you took too much depreciation. 
So you're going to have a $500 recapture of depreciation. And that $500 recapture of depreciation, that is fully taxable as ordinary income. So that's just income that gets added to your normal income for that year, just the opposite of the tax deduction you got in the earlier years, which makes a lot of sense again. That's undoing the tax benefit you got earlier. In the second scenario, we can see that here you sold it for less than what you told CRA it was worth. The Income Tax Act says, hey, you missed out on $400 of depreciation here. And because you were only able to sell it for $7,600, you're now going to have a $400 we call terminal loss. And what that means is you actually have a deduction against income. So sort of like you stored up some of your capital cost allowance, and now you're going to use that on that final sale. And then in my third scenario, in the third scenario, first off, you're selling it for way more than its UCC. You're also selling it for more than its ACB. You're going to have to repay all of your depreciation. Here you're going to have a $2,000 recapture of depreciation. And you're also going to have, because you're selling something for more than its ACB, you're also going to have a $1,000 capital gain. The recapture of depreciation would be fully taxable. The capital gain, as we're accustomed to, is only half taxed. So you would have $2,500 of income related to the disposition of that property. Now. I hope that's all clear and if you work through those sort of one at a time I think that it does make sense um, obviously I think it makes sense I taught it that way then what if you have property remaining in the class so you're selling one of your cars but you still have two cars left so there are some particular outcomes here. So first off, let's say, just for the sake of argument, that the property left in the class had a UCC of, how about $40,000? We'll make it a nice fat spread there. So UCC of $40,000. And now I sell one chunk here. I sell this piece of property for $8,500. Normally, that would have been a recapture of depreciation. But it's a little bit different here. What happens instead is we would just reduce the UCC by $500. So now, instead of having a $40,000 UCC, it'd have a $39,500 UCC. Basically, that's $500 less depreciation that's available down the road. And if you're sort of following along here, I'm sure you can appreciate that in the next scenario, if we would have had a terminal loss, hey, that's more depreciation that's now going to be available. You would actually be able to increase your UCC by $400 here. And that means you would have now a UCC of $40,600. That's more depreciation you can use down the road. You don't get the terminal loss, but the amount of depreciation you can use is now enhanced. And then in my final scenario here, this one would be a little bit more complicated. Again, we would increase the UCC. And again, we would increase that UCC by, this time, the $2,000 recapture of depreciation that would have happened. Sorry, decrease the UCC. I apologize. Sorry about that. Let me fix that but you knew that, right? We would decrease the UCC by $2,000, and you would have just a $38,000 UCC for the remaining property now. Now, as mentioned before, this is something if you're dealing with in real life, if you actually have a scenario where this becomes important, 
it is important to bring in an accountant. There are a bunch of planning issues around this and there's a bunch of complexity. For example, when you sell a passenger vehicle that's been used for business use, typically there's no recapture of depreciation there. So there are a bunch of funnies around this or a bunch of particular rules that you do have to pay attention to and some things that get treated differently with eligible capital properties that make this a little bit more complicated. But I hope this gives you a basic understanding of what capital cost allowance and undepreciated capital cost are. Thank you very much and please enjoy your continued studies.